it's a pleasure to welcome to our studios, I think for the first time, State Senator Stan Adelstein. Stan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me, especially today. You know, we have some important things to talk about today, and uh, I'd like to let you give your impression of the governor's proposed constitutional amendment, Amendment P. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. This amendment is supposedly a balanced budget amendment, but it actually weakens the Constitution. Section 11 of our present Constitution provides that any time that the legislature appropriates more money where the expenses, that's easy to understand, exceeds the income, those are two pretty simple words, the legislature is mandated, must, levy a new tax. The governor's proposal says that the budget must not exceed anticipated revenues, whatever anticipated means and who does it, or funds. Well, well you know, Stan, that's, a, uh, uh, that's an interesting uh, paradox because what we saw this year was that revenues were underestimated. And, and I think you would uh, make the assertion that that created some problems, but if a, a governor were to overestimate the uh, anticipated revenues, that could create a terrible train wreck for South Dakota voters. Absolutely, and it has in other states. Illinois got into something like that, and it took them 25 years to pay off bonds, although we're not even supposed to have bonds. I don't know what would happen. Uh, in fact, when you talk about funds, uh, there's the uh, state capital, uh, no, the capital, this, a actually this checkbook fund that goes up to a billion dollars or a billion and a quarter down to three yes. quarters of, 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 of a billion. And uh, very easily the governor said, well, we've got three quarters of a billion dollars so we can all of a sudden have a budget with uh, an extra 500 million. How would we ever get it done? You know, the thing that intrigues me is the way this is being presented is that it's a balanced budget proposition. It really has the potential to do exactly the opposite, to totally unbalance our budget. And that makes it even worse because not only does the governor has a very gentle uh, supporting document on one side of the guidebook that the Secretary of State gave out, the other side is totally blank. You mean to say, you and I know this, that there's no opposing viewpoint that in, the Secretary of State presented? In violation of the law, and I have brought a suit against the Secretary of State demanding that he list the cons. And I've just learned, I mean within the last hour, that our suit will be heard in Hughes County Courthouse this Friday from 12.30 to 2.30. So, by the time you're hearing this, if you hear it on our television program, it'll be a couple of days dated, but we're going to try and get this out immediately on our internet sources so that people will understand what's going on and know that even though there was no opposing viewpoint listed on the Secretary of State's information, there very well may be. What will they have to do, reprint the ballots? They have to print. We're, we're demanding that they reprint this voter information guide uh, because it's clear that for some reason, guess why, that once again the governor and the secretary are intervening in the political process. The secretary has deliberately omitted calling any one of the three of us in the Senate that voted against the bill and he is doing the same thing as he did when he supported the governor in opposing a seated Republican uh, state senator that you and I both supported. And uh, with the seated uh, Speaker of the House, who many of us were able to defeat 65 to 35, though he'd won that election four years. He can't get away with this in South Dakota forever. Yeah. Well, I think what this points to is uh, an attitude of we're going to just tell you what to do. We're not going to follow the rule book. Exactly. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time that we once again came back to the rule book. And the rule book says you must have an opposing viewpoint. And in this case, there are many of us who oppose this charade 
calling it a balanced budget amendment. It's ridiculous. You should vote no.